Tuesday before the UN Security Council. He was asked if he'll stay in the room or walk out when a Russian diplomat speaks. Still, there is a place for Russian terrorists. It's a question, not to me, I think it's a question to all the members of the United Nations. Russia continues to claim its invasion of Ukraine is justified. Zelensky visited a hospital in Staten Island, New York, bestowing medals upon Ukrainian fighters who are receiving treatment there. Thursday, he'll be in Washington. I'm Jackie Quinn. Hey, you know, we all write little to-do notes for things we have to take care of, right? Well, one woman who worked closely with President Trump during and after his term in office told federal investigators that Mr. Trump wrote her to-do lists on pretty important note cards. The aide, Molly Michael, served as Trump's personal secretary in the White House, her desk right outside the Oval Office. She stayed with Trump when he left office, working closely with him as his personal secretary in both Mar-a-Lago and Bedminster, New Jersey until last fall. She has told investigators that the notes she received from Trump were written on the back of note cards with visible classification markings that had been used to brief the former president for meetings and calls with foreign leaders and other international related matters. That's Jonathan Call reporting as Michael resigned from her post last year when the former president allegedly refused to comply with federal requests. Trump's spokesperson dismissed the report as illegal leaks. Rudy Giuliani back in the news. Mr. Giuliani is, of course, a lawyer, and he's now being sued by another lawyer, one of Rudy's lawyers, over money. His former attorney claims Rudy Giuliani has paid only a fraction, a bit over 200 grand, of nearly $1.6 million in legal fees from investigations into his efforts to keep Donald Trump in the White House. The lawsuit by Robert Costello and his law firm, Davidoff, Hutcher, and Citron, says Giuliani's last payment was about a week after Mr. Trump hosted a $100,000 a plate fundraiser for Giuliani at his Bedminster, New Jersey golf club. The ex-New York mayor says he can't express how personally hurt he is by Costello's lawsuit. Chuck Sievertson, ABC News, New York. Hey, have you guys noticed you're paying more at the pump? I mean, those gas prices just sneak up on you, don't they? Be nice if they just snuck down for a change. Nationwide, gas prices are up on average about six cents a gallon, according to the Energy Department. But now in California, refinery problems have shot up gas 30 cents a gallon in the past week. Many areas of Southern California now have $6 a gallon regular unleaded. Patrick DeHaan at Gas Buddy. Gas prices are now up uh, some 50 cents a gallon compared to a month ago because of those unexpected refinery disruptions. Nowhere is seeing a rise as steep as the West Coast, but the entire country is seeing gas prices go up. Alex Stone, EBC News. How long will Saquon be out for the Giants? We're going to check sports and head back to the roads next. Moments like my daughter telling me a new joke mean a lot to me. But after being diagnosed with metastatic breast cancer, or MBC, which is breast cancer that is spread to other parts of the body, they mean even more. I take Ibrance, Palpocyte Loop. Ibrance 125 milligram tablets with an aromatase inhibitor is for adults with HR positive HER2 negative NBC as the first hormonal based therapy. Ask your doctor about Ibrance and visit Ibrance.com. Ibrance may cause low white blood cell counts that may lead to serious infections. Ibrance may cause severe inflammation of the lungs. Both of these can lead to death. Tell your doctor right away if you have new or worsening symptoms, including trouble breathing, shortness of breath, cough, or chest pain. Before taking Ibrance, tell your doctor if you have fever, chills, or other signs of infection, liver or kidney problems, are or plan to become pregnant, or are breastfeeding. Common side effects include low red blood cell and low platelet counts, infections, tiredness, nausea, sore mouth, abnormalities in liver blood tests, diarrhea, hair thinning or loss, vomiting, rash, and loss of appetite. Winds News Time, 751. Traffic and transit on the ones. Let's get you back out to the roads with Karen Stewart. All right, Long Islanders, the westbound Del I.E. west of Willis Avenue has a broken out car. It's over in the left-hand lane. Yeah, there are delays there. Eastbound Southern State at exit 43 in Islip, we have an accident. We've got the right lane blocked, and the westbound side of the, LI, of the Southern State, excuse me, is slow to moderate, traveling from the Bethpage Parkway and getting out to 19 for Peninsula Boulevard. We've got delays on the Grand Central Parkway that are quite heavy on the westbound side, traveling from the Clearview into the Kew Gardens Interchange, and then as you make your way further westbound, delay start at City Field, and go up to the RFK Triborough Bridge, which is now very, very slow. The westbound LIE from 164th out into the BQE and the Queens Midtown Tunnel is going to be a little bit of a slow ride for you there, too. And the inbound Gowanus from 39th Street to Atlantic Avenue, that is jammed, while over on the Belt Parkway um, westbound, near Knapp Street, we've got an accident there. Delays are back to Pinarsi. 
Alternate side parking is in effect today. It's another gridlock alert day. And the E-trains are suspended between Briarwood and Jamaica Center Parsons Archer with switching problems. You can take the Q60 bus instead. We're sponsored by the New York Waterway Ferry. Want a better way to the city? Take the ferry from Port Imperial Weehawken with indoor parking, fast, frequent, reliable ferries, and free connecting shuttles throughout Manhattan. Taking the ferry is simply the best way to New York. Visit nywaterway.com or call 1-800-53-FERRY. I'm Karen Stewart, 1010 Winds on 92.3 FM. All right, let's get a check of the AccuWeather four-day forecast. Meteorologist Dean DeVore, you know, you're only as good as your last gorgeous day, my friend. <laughs> there you go. Well, we're in the start of a streak of a few. Uh, gridlock alert days are a lot easier to take when it looks like this versus how we started with the rain and stuff yesterday. So beautiful weather, mostly sunny, uh, nice, fresh breeze. Temperatures getting up to about 73 in the city. A couple of clicks higher in some of the uh, western suburbs in, in Jersey, on Long Island today. Temperatures will probably be uh, also in the low to mid 70s there is a high rip current risk if you were thinking about beach weather although it's maybe a little cool with the breeze but uh, just keep that in mind temperatures tonight low 50s mid to upper 70s uh, tomorrow low to mid 70s thursday into friday then our attention turns to what could be a coastal low forming on the along the north carolina coast that could get a little gusty and have some heavy rain associated with it uh, moving towards us here as it looks like we go through the weekend We'll have to keep an eye on the timing of that and just how much rain we could get from it. But we'll cherish the next few days for sure. 58 degrees, mainly clear skies. We're going up to a high today of 73 in the city. I'm Aki with the meteorologist, Dean DeVore, on New York's weather station. 1010 winds on 92.3 FM. All right, thank you, Dino. Get out there and enjoy it. Good news for the Giants and Saquon Barclay. Medical prognosis, just an ankle sprain from Sunday's game in Arizona. I'm not a doctor, but I, I think that means he'll be back in a, a flash. Right, Mark Ernay? Well, Scott, if about three weeks is considered a flash, Flash, then yeah, given how it looked when Barkley went down with just over a minute left in Big Blue's historic comeback win, that it's only an ordinary ankle sprain as opposed to the much worse high ankle was a giant sigh of relief. But Daniel Jones and company will be without their number one running back Thursday night in San Francisco. Obviously, we'll, we'll miss him. He's a huge part of what we're what we're doing. So uh, guys will have to step up, and and it won't be you know any one guy. Uh, it'll be you know everyone elevating their their play and, and stepping up. And uh, I'm confident we can do that. We got lots of guys who can step in and and uh, do different things and and uh, and help out. With former 49er Matt Breida right at the top of that list, marker day 10-10 win sports on 92.3 FM. Oh, boy. Looks like the flying taxis are on the horizon. All eyes on Ohio. Ohio and Joby Aviation have announced a deal to bring air taxi production to a site at Dayton International Airport by 2025. Joby CEO Joe Ben Bevert says the electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft are designed to be a ride-sharing alternative in crowded cities. It carries a pilot and four passengers at more than 200 miles an hour on trips of up to 100 miles. Bevert says the Ohio facility would produce up to 500 of the quiet aircraft a year. That's Jennifer Kuiper reporting. I I'm not getting into a flying taxi. Bloomberg Money Watch next. All right, guys. <clears throat> Thank you so much for watching and joining me on my commute to work as we record history, listening to 1010 Winds in New York, metropolitan area. See you on the next video.